First, the uh, talking about um, DAST SSO. So one thing I'll just go ahead and, and toss out here, I am going to show you with SSO working. Um, the One of the cool things about the way browser-based DAST is designed is it doesn't really actually care if it's SSO or not. DAST approaches looking at your website the same way a user does, and a user doesn't usually care whether it's SSO or not. They just go where they're trying to go. If they need to log in, they get redirected. They log in, they get redirected back, and everything's fine, and that's exactly what happens to DAST. Um, so the first thing I will show is a, this is uh, pre-recorded because I don't trust live demos, but this was happening on my my machine uh, last night. So this is actually a demo of um, the DAST tool logging into um, uh, Azure via SSO uh, to the Azure portal via SSO. Um, it's with a, a a local version of the tool with the with the version that you run in a pipeline. We can't show the browser because that's not something you would do in a pipeline. Uh, so I did that locally to be able to actually show that it does work in the browser. But this is the equivalent configuration that would make that happen. And this is running in a uh, ha has run in a pipeline, and um, I have the I can show the logs for that and walk through it if we care. But the important things are um, right. This is this. Oh, you know, I should have switched my theme. I apologize for that. Um, but this is the uh, auth URL. So and and in this case. Um, I have set it to the place where I'm ultimate where I, where I want to uh, end up as a DAST scan. I'll pause for a second and say we never ever ever run DAST scans against live production websites. Uh, we have giant warnings everywhere in our docs about that. It's a bad idea because all DAST does is just start clicking around everywhere it possibly can, and you generally not a thing you want to do in a live production website, especially when once you're authenticated because it can do anything you can do. Um, so uh, this is norm normally. Right, I would not do an actual scan against an Azure portal. And I'm not doing a scan against the Azure portal here, but I am using it to demonstrate auth. And so I'm saying, hey, the, you know, the thing that I want to authenticate to is the Azure portal. Um, the fact that that's going to redirect to login.microsoft.com to do the login, that's fine. That'll happen behind the scenes. DAS doesn't care. It's just the thing that I want to authenticate to is the Azure portal. Um, here's my username. My password following good practices is uh, in a CICD variable. So it's not uh, hard coded here. Um, and we also, as part of DAS configuration, we fill in the details of how to find the username fields um, and the submit buttons. So that's what these are here the username field and the first submit field, because it's a two step login. You put in your email first, you put, you hit submit, that's this. And then you put in your password uh, into this field and you hit submit on the second field. And then this is the final bit. This is brand new. Y'all are literally, as far as I know, the first people outside GitLab who are seeing this work because it is uh, the documentation just got published today. Um, but it's after login actions. So, um, and up until now, DAST could fill in a username and a password, and that was it. Your, if your login form uh, had to have a username and password and it had to be done. When you're doing Azure AD login, you always get that pop-up that says, do you want to keep me signed in? Um, and we now have a way of dealing with that. So this is after login actions is, hey, I've put in my username, I've put in my password, I've submitted those, and now there's something else I need to do to actually finish off the login flow. Um, and we now have this after login actions to deal with that. So I, I put in uh, to click on the button that can be found by the selector, uh, which is just an input type submit on that form. Uh, and it will it clicks on it and continues on and... and uh, and finish and then redirects because it's an ending the SSO, it'll redirect back to portal.azure.com and that's where I'll end up. Um, so if I were actually wanting to scan the Azure portal, which again, I'm de definitely not doing, um, that's what I would do. I would also set the website to portal.azure.com. So it would start by authenticating, doing all this. And then once it was authenticated, it would continue by scanning um, the website configured there. Um, yeah, and that's, that is, I know I can went through that kind of fast, but it's relatively straightforward. Again, no mention in here. There's no specific configuration for SSO. You just have to configure for the login you're using. So you have to be able to describe which fields you're putting data into and you know which button you want to click, um, which is pretty uh, easy to find by inspecting the form. Um, but other than that, there's nothing. And, and, and because it's Azure AD, we have the after login actions. But there's no... Uh, specific passing of tokens. There's no special configuration for SSO. You just have to be able to enter the data into the form.